Hey guys, so it's me Nicolette Mashile and today I'm sitting next to Richard. I cannot for the life of me pronounce his surname because he's actually Greek. Um, I met him in Bryanston. I was trying to sort out my car because you guys know I'm driving to Swaziland for bushfire and um, he stopped me and he asked for a couple of coins and I was like, oh, you know what, let's not do that. Let's actually sort you out. And I think for me, what was really appealing about him is his humility you know sometimes we we take people for granted but his story is what you guys need to hear remember that we are bringing inspiring stories here and most importantly we're trying to teach right um yeah let me let him tell his story and then you guys can ask questions i'm gonna take his number and i'm gonna save it so when you guys i'm gonna put this up when you guys ask questions i'm gonna make sure that i get all the responses from him right so let's hear what richard had to say Okay, uh, my name is Richard Papagiorgio. I came to South Africa from England in 1985. Uh, I was in the uh, motor industry. Um, I worked in the, in the motor industry in Fairlands for two years. My friend and uh, let's call it business partner for want of a better word, uh, at the tender age of 19, uh, ended up committing suicide. And I decided to, uh, to leave. Uh, I couldn't be on the premises or in, the, uh, in that vicinity anymore. And I went into sales, um, something that I picked up from my father. He was, uh, he was in the encyclopedia selling business. Um, and I met a guy who, was, uh, who had a jewelry factory and uh, he was looking for reps. So I approached him uh, and basically nagged him to death until he gave me a job as a sales rep. And I worked for him for two years. Um, unfortunately, he was one of those guys that uh, spoke a lot uh, and didn't do much in terms of, uh, of action, but, uh, but a lot of talk. A lot of my orders weren't being delivered that I was taking from jewelers. And, uh, but I, I learned a, a new business. I learned some uh, the game and I learned um, about who's who in the zoo kind of thing. And in 1987, I started my own small business manufacturing jewelry. Uh, it was called Design AU. AU is the chemical formula of gold. And I was manufacturing for about two years. Um, got into a little bit of trouble. Uh, financially I borrowed uh, some money to start the business and undercapitalized I was still at the tender age of uh, 22 23 years old and um, my ex-boss uh, went insolvent and I had a little bit of inside information I managed to buy 300 kilos of silver chain from the auction before they actually went on auction and I sold it um, made a hundred thousand rand profit at the time and was uh, able to get my business back on its feet um, I carried on trading for a couple of years and then I met a guy, uh, an Israeli guy, who sort of took me under his wing. I was initially buying goods from him and uh, I wanted him to supply me. I realized that there's more money in, in buying and selling goods than actually manufacturing goods. And he said to me, why don't I come and work for him and I'll learn things I don't learn in university, to quote his exact words. Which is what happened. So I joined him and I was with him for about four years. Um, went overseas, I was going to Italy buying goods, bringing it into South Africa, selling to all the jewelers and uh, did very well with him and eventually started my own wholesale jewelry business, Rich Gold. Uh, I traded for around 12 years um, wholesaling jewelry, again importing from Italy and uh, distributing around South Africa. Um, three things happened which changed the, uh, the, the, the way the jewellery industry works. Number one, the gold price went up dramatically. Number two, the rand fell. And more than anything else, what affected it was fashions changed. People weren't wearing these heavy big gold uh, uh, bracelets and chains anymore. Um, the market changed to silver and white gold diamond rings. So I decided to get involved in the, um, dealing in the raw material. Um, I joined a friend of mine who had a refinery and uh, we started selling gold bullion um, and I've been doing that uh, right up until 20, well, 2016 was when we stopped. Uh, we had a great business, turnover exceeded 400 million um, every year for 15 years. My father was involved in the business in an administration, from an administration point of view as well. And the reason that we stopped trading was that um, SARS changed the laws regarding notional VAT. Notional VAT is where you claim VAT from a non-VAT vendor. In other words, if I buy a gold chain from you for a thousand rand, the price is deemed to include VAT. 
and we could claim the historical 14%. It's now 15, as you know. Um, the reason that they did that is a lot of people were abusing the, uh, the system, claiming huge amounts, uh, in some cases hundreds of millions uh, worth of VAT every month uh, for gold that didn't even exist. So SARS put a stop to it and unfortunately the, the good guys had to suffer because of the bad guys. It made it very difficult for us to procure uh, gold at the right price and uh, obviously we have to sell at a slight discount. Um, which made it very difficult. So we stopped trading and, uh, well, unfortunately I found myself uh, eating into capital over the next couple of years. Uh, with a high income comes a big lifestyle, as you know. I had a big house in the hard to be sport, uh, cars, bikes, and, you know, I was racing, which all takes a lot of money. And, uh, you know, three years down the line, no capital left. And uh, I've been on the street, unfortunately, for the last year and a half. Um, and uh, that's, yeah, well, that's basically my story. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about why didn't you put money away into assets and well, the, the normal thing that people expect people to do when they've got money. I, I did. I, I sort of made all the, all the right moves, if yeah. I can put it that way. I had yeah. accounts overseas. I had yeah. property in South Africa. Uh, I had loads of endowment policies. Um, the endowment policies didn't perform the way that I was hoping for. In fact, I got out less than what I'd paid in in some cases. Sure. 9-11 um, happened in 2001, and I did run out of money a little bit at that time. I had to bring some money in from overseas. I was heavily invested in American stocks. Yeah. Uh, they fell 40% on September the 11th, yeah. which happens to be my birthday, by the way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm also a Virgo. So, yes. So, um, uh, you know, when you need the money, you need the money. So every 100,000 Rand I had was now 60,000. Sure. Um, I took a knock there and it took a few years to get the bullion uh, business up and running and trading and it's very capital intensive yeah. um, and eventually money just runs out unfortunately it's uh, it's one of those things um, yeah. yes I had a good lifestyle and I lived big but I did I did put money away as well and I had money invested in the business but like I said it goes you know two three years down the line of no income and uh, before you know it you you're, you're back to square one sure. You, you speak about you had a house in hard fees, you had some properties, you had investment. I mean, you, 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 you sound like they, the, the, the person who knew what they were doing, you know? At what point did you, after the business was going down and subs changed the rules, at what point did you stop and say, this, 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 we're going down, you know, it's, it's spiraling down? Well, when I was eating into capital, um, income had dropped as well, in some cases as much as 80-85%. Uh, I realized, you know, that we're going down. Uh, a person just keeps hoping it'll turn around, we'll yeah. find something else uh, yeah. that'll, that'll keep us going and you just, you just carry on regardless. Um, I've always believed stick to what you know. Yes. And uh, I've only ever been in the motor industry or the gold industry. Um, I didn't really know what else to, to go into and I kept thinking it'll turn, it'll turn. Mm. But um, unfortunately it wasn't the case. I mean I don't think there's a bigger implication than the fact that you are on the, you know, you're currently on the streets now, you're homeless and a man like yourself who was okay just a couple of years ago having to now ask people to assist them. But what has been some of the, 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 the worst implications? What has happened to you? Um, I think losing friends and family, the way yeah. people just disappear, you know, when there's no money uh, around, unfortunately, people just uh, don't want to know. They have their own problems and, um, you know, to turn around and say, listen, I helped a lot of people when I had money uh, and there's been no one for me except for my uh, ex. Yeah. Um, but, but I guess people, you know, people have to get on with their lives and, and deal with their own, with their own uh, issues as well. And, um, it's just the way of the world. Unfortunately, it's the world we live in. Uh, when, when days are dark, friends are few, as they say. And it's, it's very, very true. Even my own father doesn't, uh, doesn't speak to me anymore. I'm surprised uh, you're not better. You know what? You, you, I, I, you get over it. I am, uh, when I think about it, it, yeah. it does make a person better. But you, you move on and just get over it and, and try and carry on as best you can. So what are you hoping for now? Well, at this point, I'm looking for any kind of work that I can find. Um, I'd like to rebuild my life. I'm 53. I'm not young, but I think I've got enough fire left in me to, to do it again. 
in, 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 in whatever form it may come in or whatever business it, you know, I come across. Um, I, I'd like to, to start again and uh, you know, it, it'll be easier this time around because I know what to do and more importantly, I know what not to do. Um, and hopefully I'll have a chance to do that. Sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping for the best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's quite inspirational, especially to the young ones. Um, I just want to make fun of you now. Can I? When you looked into camera, what was the first thing you said? <laughs> God, I've gone old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard, man. It's going to get better. Thank you. I promise. Thank you very much Thank for that. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye.